Hi, welcome to Tuesdays with Rachel. Thank you for joining me this week. Today, I'm going to talk about multivites, which is introduced in level D and used all throughout level E. Uh, many of you know, I answer emails for Right Start Math and one question I get fairly regularly is about multivites. Now, I personally love multivites. I think it's a great way to review multiplication and division, and it comes with an automatic self-check. The problem is that for many students, a multivite can take longer, too long for their attention span. And if your student is not, let's say, overly accurate <laughs> in arithmetic, they can create an error early on in the pro problem, and then it will cause the rest of the problem to be done incorrectly. And that can cause students to become frustrated or just overwhelmed or stressed about it. So today I'm going to give you some tips on how you can help your child work through this section without feeling overwhelmed or getting frustrated. For those of you who are not familiar with multivides, I'm gonna walk you through one. So here we have a multivide and we're going to start with any number. In this case, we're going to start with seven. Now you take that number and you multiply it by two. So seven times two is 14. Now you take that 14 and you multiply it by three and you get 42. You take the 42 and you multiply it by four. You take it, get that answer and you multiply it by five and then by six and by seven and eight and nine. So you go all the way through two through nine. And that's just the multiplication portion of the multivide. Now we're going to take that final answer, 2,540,160, and we're going to do the dividing. So that's our starting point for the division. And we're going to just start again at two. So we're going to take that number and divide it by two. And the interesting thing is, is instead of putting, you know, in normal division, we put the number up on top. In multivides, we're going to put the number on the bottom. So we still say two divided by two is one. 5 divided by 2 is 2 with the remainder of 1. So we're going to put our little 1 here. I can't do it because this is a computer, but put our little 1 there. 2 goes into 14 seven times with no remainders. 2 goes into 0 zero times. 2 goes into 1 zero times, but with one remainder. So we're going to put the 1 up here. 2 goes into 16 eight times, and two goes into zero, zero times. So you can see how that works. Now you take that answer and you divide it by three. You take that answer divided by four and so forth, all the way through nine. Now you know you've done the, the problem correctly if your answer is the same number as what you started with. There is that self-check. So as you can see, the problem will be is if you got a problem wrong early on. So if I said two times or seven times two is 16 versus 14, you can see how the rest of the problems are going to be all wrong and the child having to go all the way back up to the beginning to find their error can cause a lot of stress. So with my children, I had several adjustments that I made to multivides to make it easier for our kid, my kids. And I'm gonna share those things with you. So here's some ideas to make it easier for your family, hopefully. The first thing that I did was we only did a section of the multivide at a time. So that could be a predetermined number of multivides. So many times I would just say, let's do a multivide of seven, five times. So that meant we would do seven times two, times three, times four, times five, all the way to the five. And then they would be done. And then the next day we come back and we do the times six, seven, eight, and nine and we would be done. And then we would go the following day, do the first portion of the division. And then the, the fourth day, we would do the last portion of the division. So that worked really well for my family. So we just take, took a segment and they were able to accomplish it fairly quickly. Other days, I just set them down with a timer and I'd say, okay, we, we have five minutes to see how far you can get um, through the multivide. And that worked really well for my kids too. 
Now, another idea I had is to spot check the answers. And I'll tell you, this really took some stress off my kids. Um, when I told them that we were just going to double check the answers every time. So when we first started the multivides early on, my kids were still figuring it out. I would check every single answer. So my son would say, do seven times two and he'd shout out 14. I would check my answer. If it was 14, I'd say, yep, you're good to go. And he would go on to the next section. Now, if he got it incorrect, let's say he did seven times two is 16, I would not tell him the correct answer. I would say, nope, you'll have to go back and take a look at that one again. And that way he was still working on the uh, process of figuring out where his error was, which I think is an important skill for our kids to develop. So I would not tell him the correct answer, but let him know that if it was right or wrong. Another thing that I did, and this was the funniest thing, we did start uh, the multivites on the whiteboard. And there is just something about the whiteboard uh, that my kids just kind of felt freer with. I don't know how to explain it, but when they would get something wrong on their worksheet or, you know, on their paper, and they'd have to erase it, <laughs> they would just throw a fit. But if they messed up on the whiteboard, the quick little eraser um, was, I guess, easier for them. I don't know what it was, but doing the the multivite on the whiteboard was just more fun for them or something. So <laughs> I don't have a good answer for you on the reasoning why, except that the result was that my kids did not have as much frustration with it. So you might want to try just putting the, um, the multivite on the whiteboard and seeing how your kids do. One other thing I did, and this was a fun thing um, I did with my one son, uh, we would take turns. So my son would start with seven times two, equals 14. Then I would take 14 times three and get the answer 42. And he would take that 42 times four. And what was really fun about that was um, he would check my answers. I would check his answers and we could double check and make sure each other was correct. Now, sometimes I would purposefully make a mistake so he can get the practice of finding that error. Um, sometimes I didn't mean to make a mistake and he still caught it. So yay, good for Logan. Um, but anyway, what I found with that, uh, that kind of a option was it took a lot of the stress away from my son. He was like partnering up with me. So it wasn't all on his shoulders to solve the problem. We both worked together and it was kind of like a team effort. So he loved that. Uh, one other thing I did when, I, when my kids started getting much more familiar with multivides, uh, one thing I got frustrated with was we were working a lot on multiplication for a day or two, and we hadn't even touched division. Or we would work on division portion of the multivide, and we didn't touch the multiplication. And I kind of wanted my kids to practice both before we got into our math lesson. So what I did was I decided to give my kids a portion of both. The multivides, the multiplication and the division portion of the multivide. And I would say something like this, we're going to do our multivide of seven through five. And so my kids would start with a multiplication, seven times two times three times four times five. Then I would take that final answer at the very bottom um, from my lesson manual and I would use that, I write this number here, and I would start there and my child would do the division, two, three, four, and five. Now, the really interesting benefit, and this was totally accidental, but I absolutely loved it, was if you'll notice here, these multiplication numbers, they are low, right? There's, they're not very large, but the division numbers are larger. So the one day you're going to have easier multiplication problems and more difficult division problems. But the next day, the multiplication numbers are going to be larger and the division numbers are going to be smaller. And that was just a great little blend that we had in our family. And so my kids just loved that portion of it. It's like, okay, I'm doing easy multiplication, not hard multiplication and hard division both on the same day. It kind of balanced that out. I hope this has given you some ideas of how you can make some adjustments to working through a multivide problem and keeping your child from feeling overwhelmed or stressed. If you have any comments or questions, questions please post them here on this page. Maybe you have had uh, worked through multivides in your family and you had other ideas. I hope you post those here on this page as well so we can all learn from you. If you found this video helpful, click the like button. And if you know somebody who would benefit from viewing this video, share it with them so that they can make multivides in their home a little bit easier for their kids. 
A few weeks ago, we talked about multiplication. Next week, um, I hope you join me because I have a very special guest, Dr. Joan Cotter, who's the author and founder of Right Start Math. And she is going to explain a brand new method she discovered for using the abacus to solve some multiplication math facts. I know you're going to love it. I remember watching it a few months ago and I was wowed by it and I know you're going to love it as well. So I hope you come back and join me next week. Until then, have a fabulous week. Bye everybody.